okay so i will just do dot join and remember we also have to comment these out so what i'll do i'll remove from here at the end at the end i'll try to print it because this is see try to understand this much part is about i'm using all of which is a signal to the main thread that please wait wait till all hello everyone welcome to my channel code with ease by varsha so last week we did a video on java 8 computable future part 1 where we primarily discussed about why computable future has come into being uh, when we already had futures we also did a couple of code demo uh, using a problem statement of file reader concurrent file reader if you have not watched it to get the context of this particular part 2 you need the context of part 1 also so i highly recommend to check that out first and also we are also doing a couple of videos on java 8 so this is what this playlist is about if you're new to the channel you you might not be knowing that we are also doing playlists for threads coding questions and these are the things which we have already covered the code the problem statement the concepts and topics that we have covered so far uh, if you're inter interested to know about threads and concurrency could also check this playlist out and now let's uh, begin with the java 8 computable future part 2 so today our focus is to discuss about all the methods of computable future using a live code demo and the follow questions so a quick recap, this is where we left off, where we discussed about what is computable future. So today we'll talk about the important method, starting with the first one, supply async. Okay, uh, something similar sounding method is called run async. The biggest difference is, if you see this particular code snippet, this is doing the asynchronous computation, which is fine, but it is returning the result of that computation. So we have returned 10 and we are representing it like an integer. But over here, if you see the run async method, everything remains the same, just that it is not returning anything. Generic type is being is uh, being shown as void, whereas the generic type over here is being shown as integer. So supply async is always going to return the result of the computation. Run async will not, right? So that is the biggest difference between, it also comes sometimes in interviews. So you can answer that. Now let us try to do hands-on uh, with these two methods first. Let's go to the ID and do the hands-on with. Let's do about supply async. So I'll have completable future and let me take it as string. Call this F1 and then I have completable future dot supply async. Okay. Take a lambda function over here and enclose it. Now over here, I want to return something. So I'll return some string. So I'll say hello Varsha. Okay. And uh, I'll just close this. Also, let's try to do some uh, sleep just to show that it is happening asynchronously. Okay, some real world delay. Surround it with try catch. And now I want to print this out, right? Whatever is being returned by this F1, I also, in order to print it, I'll just write a sysout and let F1 dot. Now, what do I print over here? Like usually we can say that we can use get, but this will throw an exception. Again, we have to do the exception handling. Simple stuff is you do F1 dot join. Okay, so when you do join, if you open this particular uh, join method, you see that it returns the result value when complete. So when the future is completed, it is going to return me whatever result it has got, right? So now let's run this. And uh, we have a three seconds of sleep and we got the output. Now the same thing, I'm just going to copy and I'm going to change this for run async. Now notice, so the moment I change this to run async, I'm getting an error over here because it is not expecting any return value. Also, this needs to be changed to void because it will not return anything, right? So I change this, everything else remains the same. I'll add a sysout just to say that it is coming from the run async method. And also, uh, we need to wait for this future to complete. Try to understand why we're using the join. We are saying that's an asynchronous computation so f1 and f2 are two different asynchronous computation and we actually want to end our main thread when both of them get completed that is why we are using join so this is the same old purpose of join method like we now let me run this so three second delay uh we have hello Varsha being printed right and we have run async now if you see we have got null so we got this run async method so over here we got null so what, what actually happened is when F2 got completed after the sleep of three seconds, it anyway printed the run async method. So we didn't have to capture, we didn't have to wait for it to complete and then capture the value, which we had to do in case of this, right? So that is why we don't have to return. If you, ret if you try to print this like this, you will get null. Now moving on to the next method. 
So you've completed supply async and run async. The next method is called then apply. So as the name suggests, you want to apply some kind of a transformation, right? So it will uh, apply a function to the result of the computable future when it completes and then return a new computable future. So this was one limitation which we have talked about in the future uh, interface also that if I want to do some kind of transformation after the previous future has done the work and on top of that, I want to do some kind of computation transformation, I will not be able to do if it was only simple future. Only because it is completable future, this line is important. When it completes, when future one is complete, then apply something. You can interpret it like this. So let's try to do this with the ID. So over here, what I can do is, let's say I will say that completable future of string itself, and I'll call it F3. And I have F1 over here, right? So F1, then apply. And on top of that, what I'll say that, uh, maybe some result that I want to say, whatever uh, whatever F1 is returning on top of that, I want to say, how are you? Like, hello, Varsha, and then something space, and how are you, right? So this is what I want to transform it with. Now, I also want to print this, so I can do S out, S out, and F3 dot join. Okay, so now let's run this. So first three seconds wait. We have hello Varsha and then hello how are you? Okay. Now there is a small catch over here. You see, hello Varsha got printed after Varsha. I mean after F1 got completed, we could see that hello Varsha how are you? I mean this transformation was done on F1, the result of the future, and we appended the how are you to that and we it got printed because we did F3 dot join. But what happened to F2? F2 was also having a sleep of three second and was trying to print, but it didn't. So now you'd be like, we got hello Varsha, we got hello Varsha, how are you? So F1 and F3 returned the result, but what about F2? Remember when we did F2 dot join, when we printed that out, we got none. Now the thing is, now each of these are independent computable futures which are running independently. They are running their own independent asynchronous computation, and the main thread doesn't know that it also has to wait for F2. So the simplest way for doing this would be we can do F2 dot join, right, and we can. Uh, you can just do f2 dot join just to give a signal to the main thread that okay you also have to wait for f2 to complete and then you can continue right otherwise it will exit another method is there is a method called all of which we will also discuss where it will wait for all the individual futures to get completed and then proceed so now now i have added f2 dot join now let's see if i run this i got hello Varsha. I got run async and also I got the result of F3. So in this way, we have now learned about run async, supply async and another method called then apply. So let's say I don't want to do this now f1.join, f2.join every time. So I can use this method called all of. Now let's see how do we use this. So we will use all of and over here I'll add f1, f2, f3. So when all of these are completed, you can then uh, after, when all of these are completed, so if I just read out the uh, documentation, it will return a new computable future that is completed when all of the given computable futures complete. So if you see this particular example that the application of this is something like this. We do computable future dot all of and then dot join. Okay. So I will just do dot join. And remember, we also have to comment these out. So what I'll do, I'll remove from here. At the end, at the end, I'll try to print it because this is C. Try to understand this much part is about I'm using all of which is a signal to the main thread that please wait, wait till all independent futures complete, right? And if you want to print the results, what is the results? I can do f1.join and f3.join because f2 anyway will not return me anything. Now, with this, let me also comment this part out and these part out. Now, let me run this. We should be getting the same result where we should be getting all the return values. But now we got all the three, but we also had the pause and the main thread didn't exit abruptly as it was exiting earlier. So we saw two ways of how to wait for all the independent asynchronous computations, right? Now moving on to the next method. So we have done then apply and now we are going to see then compose. So what is this compose is going to, you remember in case of future when we discussed about the uh, limitation that there is no way to chain a synchronous computation. Like 
you have to take the extract the result of the previous computation and then chain it and do something after it like chaining of operations but with using this particular method called then compose we can do this as you can see in this example so let's see on the ide how do we use this so we have this f1 uh, returning to me hello Varsha, and we have seen the transformation that we have done so far i'll just comment uh, okay i'll just write over here so we will now see then compose Okay, so I just want to do that after F1 finishes. Okay, after F1 finishes, then you do something else. Okay, so I will do like F1 dot then compose. So then compose, the speciality is that as the uh, documentation suggests, so as it is suggested that it will return a computable future to the result of the current computable future, right? So it will take the the future with which you want to do the composition will take that and it will flatten. So if I go into the ID, what I want to do is I want to do F1 and then I will say then compose and I will take this particular result, whatever I got from F1, I'll take this and on top of that, I want to do some computation. So I will call again the supply async because we know it will return me some value and I will take this particular result that I said that I got. What is the result of F1? I know that the result of F1 is hello Varsha, right? So I will just say, how do you do? So after F1 completes, after hello Varsha, this is not transformation. This is like I am taking after F1 completes and then I'm calling then compose and trying to do something with the result, right? I will close this and this I can store it. And I will call it F5, sorry, F4, okay? And I can also add this over here and I can try to print this out f4 dot join right now let's run this hello Varsha. how do you do before moving on just so that you guys don't get confused between then compose and then apply just a small note when do we use then compose when we have a chain of dependent asynchronous computation like one uh, computation is trying to feed as an input to the next computation. So you are trying to chain it and all the computations are dependent on each other. But you use then apply just for doing simple transformation that you apply a function to the result of another uh, computable feature. It's not like a chaining. You're just applying some transformations. This is very subtle and a very slight difference that you have, but it is important to understand where to use which one. So now we'll move on to our next method. And our next method is called then combine. So we have done then compose it is then combine so as the name suggests it is trying to combine the results of two computable futures okay return uh, uh, using a by function and returns a new computable future as you can see you have two futures future four and five i have combined future four with future five future four dot then combine future five and this by function what it is doing is it is helping me define the function which I want to perform. I Here I want to do an addition. I may want to do a multiplication. I may want to do a concatenation. It can be a bunch of different things. But this is just to define you what function you are trying to perform. And this is defining on what you want to combine. Okay. So let's go to the ID now. So let's say I want to combine F1. Okay. Which is uh, hello workshop. And I want to combine that with F3. Hello, Varsha. Hello, Varsha. How are you? Okay. Just, just to give you a good glimpse of what is. Then combine. So it's easier, I guess, if we try to take two different uh, individual values this time. I will just say computable future dot supply async. And let me return 20. And uh, over here, I will just say, let me return 50. And uh, I just want to combine these two. So I can also do it in one line instead of assigning two different this. I'll just say then combine, right? So I'm combining this with this, right? And here I can give the by function that res1, comma res2. And we can do res1 plus res2. So this is what we want. And I can just co complete this now. And when we combine this, we are going to return a computable future of integer. Oops. 
integer f5 uh, okay so we have taken these two 20 and 50 and we have combined and we have done addition and at, i can just add this to this f5 and we can print the result over here let's run this mm -hmm. so now we see that we got 70 50 plus 20 70 okay so this is how we have combined the values or the results of two different futures two different com asynchronous computations using then combine now we have another method which is exceptionally so we talked about then combine now talking of exceptionally it is a way to handle the exceptions during the execution of computable future a more elegant and more declarative way of handling exceptions rather than using the try catch blocks so we're going to the id as we can see over here this is a computable future we are trying to simulate by throwing some runtime exception and it is uh, being chained with this and it is being handled gracefully over here by printing the code looks automatically you can see the code looks more cleaner and this is a declarative way of handling the exception another thing is there is a fallback mechanism like if some exception occurs this is what i want to return this is some default value that i want to return it can be anything and also you can chain it with any of the stages like then compose then combine all the methods that we can discuss let's say you're chaining multiple asynchronous computation and you want to handle the exceptions in any of the stages then also you can use this so this kind of mechanism is not really possible when you're using try catch when you're trying to chain multiple computation and want to handle the exception that occurred in one stage and do some fallback mechanism all of this is not possible plus as i said this is a declarative way of uh, handling it the, like the more functional programming way of handling it right so this is how we have used exceptionally method now moving on to our last method which is all of which i have already discussed that it will take the array of all the computable futures and it will return a new one when all the input computable futures have completed so with that we will wrapping we are wrapping up all the important methods that we have discussed now let's move on to another section which is the real world use cases of computable future so first is microservice communication so as we can see multiple microservices trying to communicate with each other asynchronously need to send request receive response all of that will be happening we can use asynchronous uh, we can use computable future over here data processing pipeline right you have a pipeline like i said uh like you want to chain multiple asynchronous computation is actually going to align with this particular example so you can combine all the results when you got the result from all the different parts of the pipeline batch processing again same thing multiple items you're trying to process it concurrently event driven programming event driven programming also on in response to some event you want to do some computation some tasks to happen over there also you can use so there are four use cases we discussed event driven programming data processing pipelines batch processing and the microservice communication moving on to our follow-up questions how do we handle timeouts now why do we need to handle timeout is let's say your computable future is not completing within a set time let's say in two minutes five minutes one hour whatever so you want to return some default value so how do we do this so if you see this particular example it's saying that it will complete on timeout that i want to complete the future with some default value if the task has not been completed within this timeout you do not want to wait indefinitely for that right so that is where you want to uh, handle timeouts moving to the next follow-up question is how do you wait for multiple computable futures to complete? I'll take a two second pause. I think you can think of it and answer, right? So the answer is all of. And this is how we have already seen it in practice, how you're using it. So uh, what happens is, let's say I want to do a cancel on a certain task. It is going to complete exceptionally with the cancellation exception, right? So as we can see over here, we have used try catch and uh, we are trying to cancel it we are, we are using this cancel true now this is going to complete exceptionally i have demonstrated it with try catch you can also try try it out using exceptional so i think with that we will we will uh, now wrap up all the uh, so with that we will now wrap up today's video also on computable future part 2 the major focus was on the methods that we discussed so that whenever you come across any of these methods it will be easier for you to relate because you're already familiar after watching this video and uh, you can also try using any of these based on whatever use case based on whatever project that you're working on so with that note hope you guys have got some value out of this and thank you so much for watching uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel please do it and uh, do like and share this video with your friends colleagues peers uh, uh, which will just give us a boost of motivation to bring out more videos like this thank you so much